All right, welcome to the Mandarin Dragonette feeding video. This is just going to be a voiceover video and a guide to how you can get Mandarin Dragonettes to eat frozen food. So first thing that most people know when they start looking into owning this fish is that they are notoriously difficult to feed. Uh, the common advice is they will only eat live copepods, so therefore you have to have a giant like 50-gallon aquarium with lots of live rock to sustain this population of copepods copepods, which are these tiny little microscopic crustaceans. You can almost think of it like plankton, uh, and they will only eat that. They're very specialized feeders. However, I'm here to tell you that you don't really need to worry about it. As you can see, I have not only one, but two mandarin dragonets inside of a nine-gallon fluval flex, and I know a lot of people are already starting to freak out, but don't worry. I've done this before about, I'd say, I don't know, 10 years ago. I did somewhere around 2009, 2010, when I set up my hang on back 10 gallon back in high school and I kept the fish for three years and the only reason I kept them for three years and not longer is because when I went to college I tore down the aquarium and I gave the fish back to the store just because you know I just didn't want to deal with that during that particular time but I set up this new aquarium I put these fish in and I'm going to show you how to get them to eat frozen food they do just fine on that I have pretty much eliminated the need for live copepods. At least that was my experience uh, about a decade ago. They were perfectly fine just on the frozen food. So how are we gonna do this? Well, first thing is I get this kind of uh, plastic mesh container. I don't know if they're, they call these feeding baskets or breeding baskets, uh, but you can find them at the pet store. Basically just something that uh, has the water soak through it that you can put the fish in uh, because we wanna minimize the amount of space they can wander and we're going to toss in some frozen food and then I turn the power heads to kind of be blasting through that mesh so the water circulates around the frozen food keeps floating around they think that it's a living thing and they will pick at it and start to eat it so next what kind of frozen food do we need all right, so what are we feeding these mandarin dragonets? Well, I have some Hikari bloodworms here. They come in this frozen sheet, and then I have these frozen cyclopods. This is a nice item to pick up because it's pretty much their natural food source, just frozen. So what I do is I put that in a container of water from the aquarium. I let it melt and thaw out for a little while. And then what I do is I throw that food into the basket. It starts circling around the water and eventually you start picking at it. Now what you can do to help this process along is throw in some live copepods. They sell those at, you know, the you know fish store. And it, you know, something like Petco is not going to have it, but those small like private fish stores, they will have it. And you can get brine shrimp from those locations as well in most cases and you throw in the live brine shrimp or the live copepods and then they're picking at that and then while they're doing that they inevitably pick at the blood worms or the frozen copepods or the other food items we can put in there so you put them in there for about two weeks i did every other day for two weeks i put them in that basket with those food items and i didn't really even use live copepods i just put in the live brine shrimp maybe twice uh, and then after about a week they were eating the blood worms and the frozen copepods so I did it for another week just as a reinforcement and then at the end of two weeks uh, you can just toss the food into the aquarium they will eat it off the sand they will eat it off of the rocks if it falls on the rocks and you're pretty much good to go now, of course, some people will say, oh, well, even if they're eating frozen food, you still need the gigantic aquarium because they need to eat food all day long. They can't just have one or two meals. And I'm here to tell you that is also untrue. Now, the reason people think that is because that is naturally how these fish would exist in the wild. They have to eat those copepods, which, like I mentioned, you can kind of think of them as very, very tiny plankton. And to fill up their stomach, it takes them hours and hours to eat enough of those to have a meal but you can see these blood worms are a little bit larger than you know little microscopic plankton items so they fill up their stomach after you know just a few minutes of eating them and that's good enough to sustain them like i said i've done this for three years they just look you know gut loaded they're very healthy and they keep growing so it's good enough you don't need any live copepods this method for me at least has pretty much eliminated the need for any live copepods so 
Um, like I said, I kept him for three years. The only reason that I have that three years as a benchmark is because I tore down my saltwater aquarium. I couldn't keep it anymore, and I gave him back to the pet store. But I think three years is proof enough that, you know, if they were going to have some kind of problem without any live copepods, they would be dying a little bit earlier than after three years uh, or even longer because I could have kept going. So, like I said, I kind of just don't listen to people who you know keep saying they must have live food as well they have to have a gigantic aquarium uh the biggest i've ever gone with these is a 10 gallon aquarium uh they you know live perfectly fine for me i would like to say that's my opinion but i think it's kind of more than an opinion at this point it's just i have verifiable evidence that this method does work so here I put in all the rocks. Of course, it's harder to see them because they love hiding, uh, but the only difference in the feeding method is that when I throw the food in, I turn the filter off and I kind of just make sure it falls in between all of my rock work and they just pick at it at a similar way. And then if you want to, you can still separate them out, you know, every couple of days into that basket to make sure they're eating food. But I mean, once they start picking at those items, it's pretty much like you're good to go. Uh, so that is how I feed my mandarin dragonettes if you have any questions you can ask them down in the comments below uh feel free to subscribe to my channel i'll be back with some more saltwater videos and mandarin dragonette videos uh, but that's going to be it for now that's the technique i've used since 2010